Hello everyone. I had a request to make a video explaining how I use um, my dual monitors when I'm accessing Zoom and when I'm running classes. So I thought I would go ahead and attempt to do that. I'm not entirely sure what this is going to look like since I can only screen grab one monitor at a time, but this is my main screen. So I have two screens sitting in front of me. I'll insert a picture here so you can see what those look like. I've got one screen that is directly in front of my face. That's usually where I show my slides. And then I have my laptop kind of sitting next to that and on my laptop I have the classroom open so I can see any students who are enrolled any posts that type of stuff and I also drag a lot of the other kind of things that happen in a zoom meeting over there so for example I've joined this meeting via my cell phone that's this pixel 2 that you see right sitting right here that's just me who's joined the meeting so you can see what the the screen would look like if you actually had students in the classroom now these I usually am able to kind of keep on screen I'll just move them them to different places throughout our class. I try to make it so my slides have enough space that I can have the students in front of me. I like to keep them on my main screen as long as I'm able to do so. I feel like that gives me the ability to kind of interact with them more and it also just lets me see their faces, see if they're understanding stuff, see if they have questions. So I prefer to keep my students on my main screen. Now the other parts of this Zoom meeting I do not keep on my main screen so I'll open those now. One thing that I like to keep open is my participants window. The reason I like to keep this open is twofold. One, I can see when students unmute themselves in the participants window. It shows you like on the audio um, who's kind of peeking out, who's making sound. If I have a student who's maybe got some background noise going on and they've accidentally unmuted themselves or purposefully unmuted themselves for that matter, I like to be able to kind of see exactly who that is. It also lets me see that waiting room in real time. That's kind of become an issue since OutSchool has activated the waiting room waiting room. Um, it's been a little challenging for some people to be able to see students who are in the waiting room. You don't want to miss anybody. So having this participants window open helps me kind of access all of that. It also allows me to ask students to unmute themselves if they, you know, maybe they don't have their camera on. I can't just click on their face to ask them to unmute like you would do here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's helpful. It's really helpful to have that ability. The other thing that I like to keep open in my classes in particular is I like to keep the Zoom chat file open, the Zoom chat menu open. The reason for this is I teach a lot of teenagers and I teach a lot of fairly large ongoing classes and most of the time these students prefer to use the chat box to talk. I would say in my largest teen sections I probably have between 50 and 70% who like to use the chat to talk instead of unmuting themselves. There can be a lot of reasons for this, but I like to try to accommodate them the best I can. So I keep that group chat open just so I can see what's going on in there. This also allows me to kind of see if anybody maybe is saying something inappropriate in the chat box that I need to shut down. Um, sometimes I also will have parents, especially with my younger students, who might be having an issue and they use the chat box to send me like a private note so I know what the issue is. So I, if you're able able to keep all of these things open at once, I really recommend it. It's very beneficial. Obviously, if you've just got the one screen, this can be a little challenging, right? All of my slides are kind of obliterated at this point. I can't really see what's going on. So let me show you what I put on my second monitor. And here's a view of my second monitor. So like I mentioned, I like to keep my participants window open in the second monitor. I also like to keep my group chat um, folder, I'm not sure what to call it, my group chat window, I suppose, open over here. And like I said, I really think it's beneficial to be able to be in the classroom without school. So what I mostly keep an eye out for is this enrolled column over here. As students enter, I'm able to essentially take role, see who's joining. And then if I were to have a student or have somebody trying to enter my meeting who's not a student, I'll be able to see that their name is not on here. Now, if you deal with a lot of younger students like I do, one thing to always keep Keep in mind as you're watching those names pop in is that sometimes younger students may be joining under their parents account so I like to just kind of keep an eye out for that if I have a student named Sam for example but mom's name is Margaret and I see a Margaret trying to enter my classroom I'm probably going to go ahead let them in and then at that time deal with it and make sure you know that it actually is Sam and that it's not somebody else who is not signed up for the class but that happens a lot you know parents sometimes don't know that they can change the the name on the account 
to, to match their student's name. So just keep that in mind, especially again, little kids that happens on a fairly regular basis with them. Now in the event that I was teaching and maybe I needed to really be able to see my full slides, which it does happen sometimes, like I said, I try really hard to make my slides work so that I don't need to see the full slide so that I can keep my students' pictures. Um, I can also just drag, here you can see it, drag this guy on over here and then that will have all of my students' faces. That's really helpful, again, if I have some really huge slide going on. But you can absolutely kind of accommodate your slides so that you don't need to do that. So you can always kind of have room for your students' faces to be up on your slides. Another thing to kind of point out about the student faces here that I see mentioned a lot, and I don't actually have access to it right now just because there's only one of me in here and I don't feel like running around the house and getting a bunch of devices to log on um, to the Zoom meeting to show you. But sometimes when you have like more than five students, it can be hard to see them because their little like faces don't pop up here on screen. So one way to accommodate that is right next to this double box, you would see a box that had like several different boxes within it. Um, maybe I'm not describing that well. If I can find a picture of the image, I'll insert that picture so you can see what it looks like. Um, but if you click on that, you can actually toggle to have multiple students on the screen at once. The automatic kind of setting will allow you to have six students, but if you click in these corners, again, it's not gonna let me do it just because of the way that I've got this set up. But if you were to click in the corners here, you'd be able to drag that screen out. You can make it huge. I've made it so I can see all 12 of my students at once when I have 12 students. But at that point, you're gonna probably have to put it on a second monitor um, unless you have basically nothing going on on your slides. But I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this made sense. Again, I'll try to insert some pictures about my setup so you can kind of see what I'm talking about as far as like where I put my camera and where I put the different monitors and all of that good stuff. And I hope everybody has an awesome rest of your week and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.